Hi, my name's Kat and you're watching Kat Rose Astrology. And today I've got another reading from my book, Discovering Your Personal Diamond, which is currently available now for pre-order on Kickstarter. Um, I'll put the link in the description below. Yeah, if you don't know what Kickstarter is, it's basically a way for creatives, creators of all kinds to basically launch different products um, and crowdfund them. So people from the community basically help bring the project to life. And currently the project is very much brought to life. We're at, I'll, I'll share my screen. Um, at the time of recording, we're at um, 90 backers, which is really cool. I've been trying to rally people to get to the number 100. I mean, it's kind of irrelevant at this point, but um, it would be cool to see 100 backers before the project ends. Um, so if you're interested in this and, you know, checking out the book, Discovering Your Personal Diamond, and you want to go directly to me and not have to buy it through Amazon, uh, this would be a good time to support the book. Uh, I've also got the option here to, which I'm very excited about, an option to purchase the limited ed edition hardback copy of the book. So this is something that a lot of people were like, you know, I, I'm, I'm old school. I don't want to read a, a digital ebook. I want the physical thing. So I'm going to make a lovely um, like linen covered dust cover wrap whatever you call it um basically a really nice high quality hardback which i'll sign for everyone so if you're interested in that um you'll be able to get that hopefully before christmas um so yeah like i said i'll put the description below there are also a lot of other goodies as well including um the online course on discovering your personal diamond as well as one-to-one -one readings with me thank you to everyone who's supported this project so far and brought it to life all right, so if you'd like a sneak preview of what's inside the book, um, stay tuned because today I'm going to be reading from a chapter on discovering your personal diamond. And this is all about the animal face of the diamond or the diamond familiar. This is the face of the diamond that I actually almost forgot to write about. And um, I'll just dive into the reading for today. The face of the diamond I almost forgot to write about happens to be the one I have had most experience with, the animal face. I'm not sure why this was. Maybe my diamond resisted being described so closely. And maybe you know by now that I often talk about foxes and how they relate to my diamond quite a lot. This is also the face of the diamond that is most likely to appear in physical form. When we see the diamond's animal face, this could be in a species of animal or bird or fish. I know they're not all animals, but you know what I mean that appears at key moments in our lives. We might see the diamond in a creature that some believe is our pet, but we know better. It is arguably the most personal face of the diamond as it shows itself as a being with personality in physical form with physical needs and preferences. And here's a lovely quote from Charles Baudelaire. It is the familiar spirit of the place. It judges, presides, inspires everything in its empire. It is perhaps a fairy or a god. When my eyes, drawn like a magnet to this cat that I love. And so that's Baudelaire talking about his cat as the diamond, basically. In 1667, Margaret Loy, or Ley, found herself before the authorities accused of witchcraft. She told the court that she had been a witch for 30 years since the passing of her mother, also a witch. Before her mother died, she had left Margaret and her sister the inheritance of her familiars. Whether they were inherited, conjured, or found, whether they were wanted or unwanted, the witch's familiar has a long time been an accomplice, has for a long time been an accomplice to all sorts of magical practitioners, ferrets, mice, rats, toads, birds, and of course, the classic black cat are all animals which have become popular choices in the assistance of witches and cunning folk throughout history. We find evidence of these relationships in medieval and early modern records, but even today, there are plenty of contemporary contemporary practitioners who work with animal assistants in this way. Like the daimon we have been getting to know, the familiar was said to assist the human in their intentions, as well as provide protection and guidance. It doesn't have to be an animal that takes the role of a familiar either. Some have posited that the Bodhi tree that Siddhartha Buddha sat under is what instructed him on how to reach enlightenment. We see similar connections between humans and plants, trees, mountains, rivers, and so on, in the Druidry tradition, as well as many Native American tribes. And don't worry if you don't have an animal or human friend who can take on this role of daimon familiar either. Many individuals work with imaginal familiars, beings who are seen in the mind's eye. Tolpomancy is a practice that embraces thought forms as a kind of daimon. And I've got a footnote more about tolpomancy, so got to read the book to find out more about that. Or just Google tolpomancy because it's pretty cool. So what kinds of 
powers might a familiar or a daimon familiar offer us? An ally, Don Juan said, is a power a man can bring into his life to help him, advise him, and give him the strength necessary to perform acts, whether big or small, right or wrong. This ally is necessary to enhance a man's life, guide his acts, and further his knowledge. In fact, an ally is the indispensable aid to knowing. And that's a quote from uh, The Teachings of Don Juan by Carlos Castaneda. Like Castaneda's ally, the familiar spirit or the personal daimon can help us in any of our acts, big or small, right or wrong. The knowledge it can bequeath us is also a big part of their gifts to us. Quite happy I used the word bequeath. It's a brilliant word. A witch is familiar was said to help diagnose illnesses, identify the sources of possible bewitchment, finding lost objects, as well as divining the future. What your daimon helps you with is personal to you. What your ambitions are, and what your daimon is willing to help with. So how do you connect with the animal face of your daimon? If you haven't found a daimon familiar to connect with and feel drawn to this particular face of the daimon, I invite you to try at least one of the following practices. All right, so here we get into the, to the tips. You know, I love tips. Number one, think about your past connections to certain animals. As we'll see later in part three, the daimon can be much more evident in our childhood than it is in our adult lives. Think back to the past. Was there an animal or beloved pet that you had a special connection with? I had a childhood fascination with dinosaurs and lizards. And while I never had a pet gecko as much as I wanted, later in my life, the daimon has revealed one of its forms to be a dragon, the mythical ancestors of my childhood favorite. Two pay attention to your dreams. In part four, we'll explore dream work in more depth, but for now, keep a notebook next to your bed to jot down any animal or bird or fish, reptiles, who might show themselves in your dreams. Is there any particular animal that comes up again and again? Pay attention for more signs of it in waking life. That could be your diamond showing itself in, familiar, in its familiar form. Number three, journal about the animals that you feel drawn to. Reflect on one animal that has a special significance to you. Ask yourself, if this animal were my guardian spirit, what lessons could it be trying to teach me? What might it be guiding me towards? Spend a few minutes journaling on the answer. It can help to repeat this exercise multiple times and look for patterns and synchronicities. If you are looking for messages from the animal that speaks most to you, here are some possible archetypal associations with some popular animal guides. So I'm going to list um, about five of those now, but in the book, I've got a heck of a lot more. Just don't have time to go through them all right now. Number one is a bear. So this could represent courage in the face of adversity, leadership, solitude, grounding through nature. Another one is a butterfly. This can speak to transformation, moving through different cycles of life, renewal, rebirth, and also playfulness. A cat, curiosity, adventure, exploration of the unknown, independence, patience, waiting for the right moment to act. A crow, alchemy, intelligence, a higher perspective, flexibility, adaptability. Make a totem. Once you have an animal that feels right for your daimon familiar, a way to remind yourself of its qualities is with a physical representation, a photograph, a painting, a piece of jewelry, or a statue. While making it, you might bring the animal to mind, concentrating on its image. Maybe watch a nature documentary or have sounds of the animal's environment playing in the background while you make it. And if you haven't seen it yet, I have my diamond familiar totem right here. Um, let's see if you can see that there. Um, this was something that a friend made for me, knowing that um, I have a fox diamond uh, familiar. And... Uh, very kindly um, crafted that for me. So that sits on my desk and it's very present when I'm, when I'm working. And number five, call on your diamond familiar. Part of the bond between witches and their familiars is forged through the magical support that the familiar offers. From diagnosing illnesses to finding lost objects to divining the future, your personal diamond in animal form may be able to assist you. Perhaps its area of expertise is associated with its animal form. So, for example, the diamond showing up as a butterfly might be able to help you with a personal transformation. 
and there will be more guidance on petitioning our diamonds in part four. So again, if you're going through something right now, struggling with something, it might be that that becomes either a clue to the nature of your diamond in an animal familiar form, but equally on the other side of it, if you already know its form, let's say it is a fox like mine, um, maybe that's going to be helpful in directing you towards something that it can help you with in your life. Okay, so that's what I've got for today's reading. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I love sharing stories about the diamond in its animal form, and this isn't going to be, you know, everyone's favorite or most accessible face of the diamond, but for some of us, it really will be. And so if you'd like to share any stories you have about um, a potential diamond familiar that you have, that you've seen, any animals that you've had a special connection with, feel free to leave a comment below. I really like hearing from you. And just a reminder that you can support the book Discovering Your Personal Diamond and pre-order your copy now via Kickstarter. I'll put the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, if you want to find out more about my work and um, the other readings that I offer, the other astrology readings that I offer, go to catroseastrology.com and you'll see more about me there. All right. Thanks as always for watching, for liking this video and subscribing, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.